Today I'm taking you on a tour of my van. It's not a weekender. It's also not our full-time home. It is my daily driver and family adventure rig. My family and I have had the opportunity to travel extensively with it. We bought it with 36,000 miles and we're up to 125,000 miles. We've taken it as far west as Monterey, California, southeast down to Orlando and Miami area, and then up into Boston in the northeast, and then extensively here within central Texas, out into the hill country and in and around the Austin area. So today I'm gonna to talk through the context of why we bought the van in the first place, my vision for it. I'll take you on a tour and talk through the build out of it, and then we'll wrap up with what I have planned next for the next evolution of the van. So with that said, let's hop in. So during the pandemic, all of the airlines were requiring anyone two and older to wear a face mask while traveling. And my wife and I had wanted to buy a adventure van for quite some time. And we came to the realization that it would probably be easier for us to buy a cargo van and upfit it into a adventure vehicle than it would be for us to try and convince our almost two year old to wear a mask for four hours. I don't know if you've ever tried to convince a toddler to do anything, but it's a task. And so in November of 2020, after extensive research, I found a 2016 Sprinter 2500 low roof, four by four, uh, being sold out of Houston, Texas. Drove out there, was able to test drive it, and uh, it fit all of our needs. Picked it up, brought it home, and started the conversion process. So the van started life as a pure cargo van. Up front, there was a three-seater bench. Right here was a bulkhead from ceiling to floor. There was no side window here. The entirety of the back was gray plastic and then a handful of attachment points. The van was going to replace my Ford F-150, and so it needed to be able to be a daily driver and then also haul people and supplies. Um, we live a very active life, and a pickup at that time was incredibly useful for the activities that we had planned. And so the van had to be able to replace those capabilities. And then on top of it, what the pickup lacked was that we needed it to be an adventure rig as well. So there was a number of jobs that I had planned for the van to fulfill. And I started building out this concept of modularity. And so while the van can be turned into adventure mode, everything from the seats to the back of the van can actually be disconnected, pulled out, and it can be converted back into a cargo shell. So the first order of business was to bring it up to Ad Adrenaline Vans up in Colorado and uh, fantastic crew. If you're in the market for getting a van upfitted, highly recommend them. Uh, they were great to work with. They were able to accommodate us at a very busy time. And so they tackled four things for us. They installed the RRE smart floor, the SPAR diesel heater, two swivel chairs, and then the window over here by my daughter's chair. So we chose to use the RRE smart floor specifically because it leverages the LTRAC system, six, six rails of LTRAC, same as they use when building airplanes. And the seats, when combined with the LTRAC and the subfloor, are crash test rated, which was uh, critical for me when we did the van build out. So in addition to the six rails of LTRAC that are part of the subfloor, we also have six rails of L-Track that create a rib system throughout the van. So there's two on either side of the bed, um, two that run along the top of the walls, and then two that run down the center of the ceiling. So what the L-Track enables me to do is that anything that I put in can be bolted and attached to that L-Track, or if I need to take everything out, everything is modular and can be removed. Both these chairs, the bed system, the fridge, everything can be uh, unsecured and removed and the entire van can go back into cargo mode. Up front we swapped out the three seat bench for two captain's chairs on OEM bases and OEM swivels. I had to source a new floor to make up for the missing middle seat. And then in the middle here I replaced the OEM entertainment system with an oversized Sony version and a cradle for my phone. 
And then this ductwork over here on the right is a, a partial solution to run additional air conditioning from the front of the van to the back of the van. So we added this window to the side, that way I have added visibility when changing lanes and also the kids have uh, additional visibility when we're traveling. We added these curtains, both windows and then also one that draws across the, uh, the cabin. That way we can shut out some of the, the heat from the sun during the, the summer days here in Texas and then also so we can black out the van when we park at night when we're camping. We've got my daughter's, both my daughter's seats. Down here is a tote with all of our roadside assistance materials. So in the event of a flat tire, I've got a high-vis jacket in there that I can throw on for a little bit of added safety. I've got um, roadside flares, inflate a tire, jumper pack, things of that nature. Behind the tote lives our EcoFlow battery which we charge off of shore power, which also runs our Iceco fridge. And our Max Air fan. Back here, I built the bed frame out of 8020 and plywood. Our camp kitchen is a little fold-away box, and then we have a uh, Zarg's aluminum case with our camping gear. Originally, this was two benches that converted either into bed mode or into table mode, and I found that when we were traveling, we never converted it to table mode, and if we did, it was a, a real pain in the neck. And so I made the decision to scrap that design and just do 80 20 pillars as a bed frame and uh, this has freed up so much more space and ease of access when we're underway trying to get anything out of those two benches when we were traveling was an absolute nightmare over here we have a temporary toilet that we only really use for emergencies On the back here, we added the Owl tire carrier. That way we can free up some space under the van for future projects. Um, my first set of hardware that I got rusted out and all I had to do was email them and they sent me a, a new kit free of charge. So the customer service with Owl vans is, uh, is top notch. And so far this new hardware kit hasn't caused me any issues. One of my early projects was to build this drop down cot for my daughter. And so it's PVC, it uses the fabric from a, uh, a cot that I picked up at Cabela's, and then it's shackled through climbing mounts that are attached to the L-Track up top. And uh, she had some fun with it early on, and then found it really difficult to get in and out of, especially when we were parked for the night. And uh, she had to get up and use the restroom trying to get down and step around us it was pretty difficult. And so on order, I have a cab bunk twin system coming and that way uh, both my daughters will have their own beds and we'll kind of switch things around as far as what our camp setup looks like. One of the most useful additions that I made was to take netting and add it to both sides of the door and so especially when we're parked for the night being able to stow things in here um, keep jackets on hand have them readily available this has been supremely helpful and all it is is just netting a couple of staples and then the pre-existing uh, gray plastic shell that came with the van overall i think that buying the van was a phenomenal decision we've been able to take some amazing trips as a family as i said out to monterey through joshua tree up through Colorado in the winter, got to camp out at Strawberry Hot Springs, uh, got to camp out at the uh, Camp Wilderness out in Disney with the family. And so it's really taken us to some very cool places. And my hope is that my daughters have been able to see the country in a very different way than if we had uh, you know, flown everywhere that we traveled to. The van's not yet done. One of the biggest things that I need to figure out is the, uh, the heating and cooling situation on the interior. Being that it was a cargo van, it was never outfitted with rear air conditioning, and uh, it was also never insulated in the back. 
And so while I've added Havelock wool, I've put up the wall panels, um, that really doesn't account for additional air conditioning in the back there. And so especially during the Texas summers, uh, it can become a sweat box in here. I have an EcoFlow Wave 2 on its way. I'm gonna get that set up, give it a try. I tried the Wave 1 and wasn't super happy with it, but it seems like there's some uh, parts that have come out that should make it a whole lot easier to set up within the Sprinter van. In addition, I'm probably gonna take down the 80-20 bed frame and replace that with a, a plywood built storage and cabinet system that I have plans for. Um, and then the other component that I wanna do is go through and any of the, the bare metal that you can still see in the back, I wanna go through and upholster all of the rear. But with that said, I am incredibly thankful that I've had the opportunity to build this out with my wife, with my father, um, and then be able to journey and adventure with my family in the way that we have. So if you have questions, if you have comments, please leave them below. If there's something within the build you'd like to be able to see more of or have me explain uh, the why or the how that we've done something, please just you know drop a comment down below and I'll be happy to do so. But otherwise, thanks so much for tuning in and uh, I'll see you in the next one.